In this video, I want to show you a trick that you can use to unwrap a geometry and have it in 2D in the UV coordinate space. You get your coordinates as a top and then you can do other top operations with it if you want and apply that back onto the geometry. Now, to be precise, we're not really unwrapping the mesh. Let me show you another model here. What we're doing is we are revealing how the UV map was projected onto the geometry in the first place. Now, in order to show you how this works, there's this small project here with uh, two levels. On, on this level, we apply the texture back onto the geometry and the actual technique is happening inside this base here, which is uh, fairly simple. It's a, it's a simple technique. But there is one aspect that needs to be taken into account if we want to get a seamless texture here. And I'm going to show you how this works. And we can start from scratch in a new file. And we can start our network with a sphere SOP. I'm going to change the primitive type to polygon. Next, we need a facet SOP. Just going to leave it here for now, not going to change anything. And a texture SOP. From that, we can drop a node to end our chain. And we are ready to render our scene here. So, pretty standard. Middle click, pick a geometry, then pick a camera, and a render top. From the render top, I want some background color in my scene, so I'm going to drop a transform top and my color is going to be 0 0.12, 0 0.12, 0 0.12, alpha 1, pump over background color. And then from my transform, I'm ready to drop an alt top and toggle the display flag. Now, I don't want to see uh, my scene here in the background, so I'm going to switch off backdrop tops. Instead, I'm going to split my screen and choose panel here because I want to see my scene here on the right hand side. And I want this to be in a square format. So I'm going to go to my render and change the resolution to 1024 by 1024. And I also need to adjust the dimensions of my panel here. So go up one level, select container, layout, and let's point to the top we're referencing here. So it's going to be OP dot slash to go inside out one dot width you can copy the expression and replace with by height now we have a square format again and we can go back inside next we need to give our geometry some material and I'm going to pick a constant mat just drag it on top and I also want to see the wireframe of these faces here so I'm going to drop another geometry from the same node. And this time I'm going to pick a wireframe mat. And the color of my wireframe, I want it to be black. It's also going to help us to be able to interact with the geometry here. And we can do that by stealing the camera from the Artball camera. So open the palette under Tools. Uh, drag and drop art ball camera, then close the palette, dive inside, copy this cam one here, go back one level, delete art ball camera, delete our camera, and paste the camera we copied. Now we should be able to rotate our texture here. Almost done with this part of the network. Last thing we need is to create our base. So middle click once again from our null. And this time pick a base comp, which I'm going to name UV Unwrap. Now we can dive inside. I'm going to slow down a bit to explain the technique here. First thing, we don't need an out SOP. We want a, a texture. So I'm going to delete this and drop an out top. Let's give ourselves some space. And the technique here starts with rendering this into a texture 
but instead of using the position we're going to use the UV coordinates so first let's create a standard render setup with a geometry and a camera and also a render top you can already connect a render top or out and toggle the display flag now we switch the, the backdrop tops off so we need another panel here let's split this top to bottom here at the top i want top viewer and i'm going to navigate to uv and wrap and here at the bottom i want panel again I can make this a bit tighter here let's also change the aspect of this render to be a square so 1024 by 1024 now a material for our geometry and this time it's going to be a Gilla cell mat drag it on top and we can start by editing our shader here I'm going to start with the vertex shader let me drag this here now we're not interested in any of this we we don't really need to know our position we don't need to know the word projection we can delete these lines and start from an empty function and I'm going to create my own position here so I'm going to create a vec4 called pos I'm just going to fill it with a value of 1 and I can already assign that to our gl position so gl position equals pos and for the x and y values I'm going to replace them so pos xy is going to be the uv square bracket 0 xy so I get the UV coordinates that Touch Designer uh, is sending me here and assign them to my position. Now the UV coordinates are in a different range. They go from 0 to 1 and the position is expecting something from minus 1 to 1. So let's correct that by doing pos xy equals to pos xy times 2 minus 1. Now if we save that and go back to Touch Designer, we get this which is not very interesting and that is because of the projection that we're using for this texture here so we can go up one level and in our texture sop here let's change the texture type to equirectangular outside which makes more sense for a sphere and now we can see something a bit more interesting let's go back inside and add some color to this so we also need to edit our pixel shader I want my colors to come from the vertex shader. So I'm just going to expect here to get a VEC4 called V color. And I'm going to assign my color to that V color. Now we can go back to our vertex shader and then export that with an out VEC4 V color. And we can assign V color to a value, any value we want. I'm going to use the first three components as our normals and then the last component can be a constant of one. Save this, go back to the design and then we can see something a bit more interesting here. Now up one level and from our UV unwrap let's drop a node and let's use this node as the column map of our constant shader here. Just drag that in. And we can see that we have a problem here on our sphere. We can see this massive seam going across these faces here. Let's try to fix that. First, we can notice that we're missing a bunch of pixels here. So there's a lot of transparent pixels on this side. And it feels like we're not getting enough pixels on the right hand side. We have this dry cut here. And in order to understand what is happening there, we can drop a dot so from our sop here let's drop a sop to dot and if we look at it it, it shows position it shows uh, normals but we're interested in the uv coordinates so we need to change from points to vertices here and now we can see the uv coordinates and some of these uv coordinates have a value bigger than one we're not really rendering all the information that we get from these UV coordinates. So we need to adjust for that. And we can do that with two chops. So from that, let's convert that 
to a chop and we want to select only the UV columns so let's select by name the start column is going to be UV, UV parenthesis 0 and the end column UV parenthesis 1 we want one channel per column and the rest can stay as is now we get chain 1 and chain 2 let's let's rename that so we know what is what let's drop a rename chop and rename to u and v now we want the biggest values of both u and v and we can find that with an analyze chop and just need to change the function to maximum now we can see that u goes up to 1.2 here and we need these values for our calculations so let's drop a null and I want to call this uv max let's organize things a bit and now we can pass these values to our shader so go back to the GLSL Go to vectors and let's create a uniform which I'm going to call u uv max and the values are going to be my u here and my v back into our vertex shader and let's declare that uniform which is a vector called u uv max and all we need to do here is to divide the coordinates that we get from touch designer by their maximum values that we just passed in. Save this, go back to Touch Designer, and now we can see that we just made our problem worse here. The gap is even bigger. But on the other hand, we can now see our full texture here. We don't have that uh, cropping or that trimming happening on the right hand side here. And we can also notice that it looks like the texture kind of fits itself. If I I could repeat the texture here uh, the right hand side would match the, the left hand side and this is what we're going to do next so after our render here let's drop a transform top and let's also insert a composite top here now we can join this transform with the, the render into the composite and let's change the operation to over. Now we want to translate our texture until it matches these edges we can see here. And we can use our UV, uh, UV max values here to do that. So let's just drag this U here. And instead of the value itself, we want one divided by the value. Now we can see that the right hand side is filled here. And if we copy the transform and paste it again and then invert the sign by multiplying this by minus one we can also fill the other side of the texture and now we have something that goes from left to right without gaps but it is still not correct here in our geometry and that is because we need one last step which is to scale this back to its original scale. So after our comp, let's drop a, another transform top. And this time we want to assign our UV max here as our scale property. So scale X is going to be U and scale Y is going to be V. And we need to re remember to change the pivot point from 0, 05 to 0, 0. Now we can see that the texture is covering our geometry much better. Now we can go up one level and try with some other settings. Let's go to our facet shop and toggle unique points and compute normals. And we can see this uh, flat shaded faces here. Uh, I also want to show you with some other models. Let me speed this up so you don't have to wait. And we can see that the texture is applied back onto the model correctly. Let's also try with a different model. And it's also working correctly. 
Now you can get this base and just save it into your palette. I already have it here under my components texture. So drag yours here and you have an operator that unwraps the geometry and reveals the UV coordinates. And this is it. This is the trick. Hope you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, until the next video.